one of the most challenging things I run into in life isn't the end of the world, it isn't cancer, it isn't women, although that could be challenging. <laughs> we all learn one. <laughs> it isn't dealing with, you know, the economy or being, you know, stuck in a position where you don't know who to vote for. Good luck with that one. How's that working out for you? <laughs> um, none of those things move me. The thing that frustrates me and that aggravates me to no end, it's the Christian who refuses to be a Christian. You know, you and I. Both of us. Neither one of us are willing to give an inch or to go a mile in order to make God glorified and we humbled so that we would be less of ourselves and he would be more exalted. You see, that's why I do videos and that's why I do utmost video because I challenge myself and I ask you to consider these things. Do you want to go the extra mile? Do you want to know what God said bluntly? Do you want to know what Jesus meant exactly? Do you really want to be giving your all to Jesus? Because, you see, I meet people all the time that say the right things, they act like they do the right things, but when they're confronted, you slap them on the right cheek and they're not turning the other cheek, they slap back. Funny how that works. That's not what Jesus said. <laughs> so, I'm kind of curious, you know, about this, you know, attitude that I see in Christianity, which is why we started Utmost Video, because we said, look, we're not going to sit down and say, you're at fault, because as soon as I say, you're at fault, I'm at fault, because it works that way. It's just a gun that points both directions. I'm sorry. When you point a finger, the finger starts here, and it doesn't go back to point at someone else. It's always here. Because what you can see in another is already in you. That's a fact of spiritual truth. It's a spiritual reality that goes on in the kingdom of God. You cannot point at another because you can't see the heart. Of course there is sin in you. Of course I can see it because I already know it because it's in me. But I have to admit the sin in me and then share with you that, hey, if you can see it, we can talk. But if you can't see it, it doesn't do me any good to tell you about it. Because if you don't see it, there ain't no way that you're going to believe it coming from me. And you know that's the truth. You know that's accurate. So that's why we have to examine ourselves. That's why we have to ask someone their opinion. That's why we have to grab a hold of videos or videos sometimes that aren't so directly confrontational but still in the same way might make us think about something that we hadn't thought of before like maybe we're at fault and not the other guy because that's where it all starts with you really it does anything that you see in life starts with you anything that I know that I deal with starts with me the reality is God and I are dealing one on one it starts there and ends there because it doesn't go any farther because God is dealing one-on-one -on -one with each individual person in the universe. Likewise, he may be dealing with some as a vessel of honor. Cool! Maybe we can, you know, compare notes and experience some of the same things. Or he may be dealing with them as a vessel of wrath. I don't think I want to be there. Sorry, but I don't disagree with you. I don't agree with you. I just know that I don't want to go there. I'm going the other way. So I choose to be obedient to what God says to me. Now what you may do, I don't know. And it's not my responsibility to know what you may do. It's my responsibility to share what God has done to me and how it's worked out in my life. You see, that's why I can say to you, hey, how's that working out for you? I mean, you could probably come back and say, great, I've been reading the Bible and it works. God has been fulfilling his word, every single little nuance of it, every single detail, all the way down to the God and tittle man, he, whatever he says comes true. And I go, yeah, praise the Lord, isn't it great? Da, 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 da. And we can rejoice in that. And then we become one in the Spirit, one in the Lord. But you see, that's not what happens with Christians, is it? No, it's not. And that's why we have utmost video. Because the reality is, you don't want to admit your fault. You think I don't, but I'm like, hey, you know what? Give me five minutes, I'll go out and sin. No problem, because pretty much five minutes passed. Yeah, I hope I get to sin again. 
No, I mean, I, I struggle. I call on the name of the Lord. I do everything that God says to do. And I still wrestle with certain things of the flesh. I still have attitudes and actions and things that i got to deal with. And I know it. But you see, because I know it, I'm also very obviously saying, Hey, you know what? There's some other sinner just like me. Ha <laughs> ha! He's going to get it because I'm going to pray for that little sucker because he's a mess. I know because I'm a mess and I can see what I got in him and he can see what, you know, in the comparative is that. Do you only want to see the good or do you want to be real? Reality check. So the point is, is that we have to come to a place of honesty. We have to come to a place of truth. You have to be real. Because anybody can tell you straight up, you're not as righteous as you think you are. You're not as perfect as you may think. We all have fallen short of the glory of God. All of us are sinners saved by grace. And all of us are not perfect. And none of us have arrived. And not one of us is higher than the other, according to what Jesus said. You see, there's a difference there. It's not an elevation or an escalation or a levelation. It is a revelation of what God is doing in us, not how we've achieved some spiritual maturity that's greater or lesser than another. No, it's just different. You may be chosen to do something differently in the moment that you need to do it than I do. Because I may be a gardener and you may be a hedge cutter. <laughs> and you may be out cutting hedges when I ask you for some help you wind up cutting down my garden and I'll kill you. You see, because you're skilled at hedge cutting you're not qualified in a garden. But because I'm a gardener I want to grow things up and I'll trim them myself. Likewise, we have to recognize that we each individually, severally as the Holy Spirit gives inspiration to walk a different walk and talk a different talk sometimes than what we really understand and comprehend each other doing. That's why we can't judge each other. Because you don't know what I'm thinking in my heart. You really don't understand me at all unless you get to know me. And unless you're willing to walk three years in my shoes, and don't give me that walk a mile in my shoes because that don't cut it, unless you're willing to live your life next to mine, and I've done it with people that I know, because I've moved in with them and lived with them in order to disciple them and to grow with them and to know them. Unless you're willing to do that with me, hey, you don't know me and I don't know you, but God does. So that's why we have Utmost Video to challenge ourselves, to make ourselves think on these things, to say to ourselves, hey, i got to do something about this. The habit of recognizing God's provision you may be partakers of the divine nature, 2 Peter 1.4. We are made partakers of the divine nature, receiving and sharing God's own nature through His promises. I know compromise when I see it. Matter of fact, I know you because most of any fleshy attitudes that come at me, I know that. That's easy to see. What I want to see is your divine nature. I don't want to see your compromise, your excuses, your humanism, your socialism, your political agendas, you know, all your games that you play every day with your wife, with your friends, with your neighbors, with your relatives. I want to hear about Jesus. Because you see, I know that the focus that God has is to make Jesus alive in me and to make me less alive than I could possibly be so that God could look down and see Jesus in me and not me in me. And I sure don't want to see you in you. I'd rather see Jesus in you. So the problem and the issue becomes, are you experiencing God's divine nature in you or are you dealing with trying to put on a scam artist kind of routine for everyone else around you? Because I can see through it. No problem. I deal with it every day. Man, you know, I'm beginning to see less and less Jesus in people and more and more of the world. Just saying, hey, just want to know, if I ask you a question like, hey, what's Jesus talked to you today about? I imagine you might want to answer, uh, well, I really haven't talked to Jesus lately. Uh, yeah, at least you're honest, and then I'll deal with you. I don't, I don't argue with a person who's willing to admit the truth. Most people will come to me and say, yeah, you know, I just, you know, I got a problem. They won't say what the problem is because they know what the problem is. I know that they know what the problem is, but they'll come to me and say they got a problem. And then you got to play 20 questions before they'll even be honest about where they're at. 
well, I, I'm in sin, you know, I've been living with this and doing with this and dealing this and doing that and, you know, that, this, that, and the other thing. And I go, yeah, I know. Well, how do you know? Because it's obvious. I mean, come on. Every Christian can know what every other Christian is doing. All they got to do is ask God. God will tell them. <laughs> That's why we don't judge. We just ask. God says something, gives you a word of knowledge, great, you know. Doesn't mean you get to judge that person. It means you get to deal with that person. You see, when you have a word of knowledge, word of wisdom, you know what that person is doing and then you know what to do with that person because the word of wisdom teaches you what to do with the word of knowledge but that's only if you're operating according to love and mercy and grace because if you're not according to mercy, love and grace God isn't going to give you a word of knowledge about what the person is doing you're going to judge them and point fingers and really reveal what you are not what they are it's pretty sneaky in a way if you understand all that concept because then you kind of go hmm I can do a reverse psych I can do a reverse spirituality on myself, you know, just by seeing other people and then say, okay, well, that's my problem. Well, okay, I got it now. I know what my problem is because I can see it in another. That's the way it works. So, if you could do that, try it. See how that works for you. Then we have to work that divine nature into our human nature by developing godly habits. The first habit to develop is the habit of recognizing God's provision for us. We say, uh, you know, Lord, I can't afford it or one of the worst lies wrapped up in that statement is we talk as if our Heavenly Father has cut us off without a penny. You know, I just, I'm sorry God, I can't, you know, God told me to do something, but I'm, I'm not unless I see the money first, am I going to go out there and risk it? You know, uh -uh, I, got, I got to count my investments, you know, I got to sit down and plan this out. We think it is a sign of true humility to say at the end of the day, well, I just barely got by today, but it was really a struggle. You know, excuse me? And yet, all of Almighty God is ours in the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, all that Jesus did and said and was should be who we are. And He will teach, and He will reach to the last grain of sand and the remotest star to bless us if we will only obey Him. Does it really matter that our circumstances are difficult? Not really. We just want to know how God will get you out. Who cares what the circumstances are? One day you could be impoverished and in debt, the next day you could win the lottery and be out of debt. Then the next day you could have the IRS come knocking on your door and take away all of it. And what did you gain, lose, or get frustrated by in worrying about any of those things? Nothing changed from where you started to where you were ended. At least you got rid of some of the debts along the way. Hey, just saying, how's that working out for you? Does it really matter that our circumstances are difficult? Why shouldn't they be? If we give way to self-pity and indulge in the luxury of misery, we remove God's riches from our lives and hinder others from entering into His provision. No sin is worse than the sin of self-pity because it removes God from the throne of our lives, replacing Him with our own self-interest. It causes us to open our mouths only to complain, and we simply become spiritual sponges, always absorbing from others, taking and never giving, and never being satisfied, always sucking up and sucking out the life from everything and everyone around us. Before God becomes satisfied with us, He will take everything of our so-called wealth, and until we learn that He is our source, as the psalmist said, all my springs are in you, Psalm 87, 7, He will remove all your security that He might be your sustenance. If the majesty, grace, and power of God are not being exhibited in us, God holds us responsible, not Him. If you aren't getting from God what you think you ought to have, the problem is in you, not in Him. He has provided and said He would. God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you may have an abundance, 2 Corinthians 9 8. Then learn to lavish the grace of God on others, generously giving of yourself. Be marked and identified with God's nature and His blessing will flow through you all the time. But when you damn it up, when you clam it up, when you keep it for yourself, then it will be like bags of silver with holes in them. If you've ever seen a bag of silver with holes in them, there ain't nothing in it. The more you put in, the more it falls out. Because it's not doing what it was meant to do. Because it's got a hole in it. You are meant to be a blessing to others. You are not meant to be a blessing to yourself. You don't get in order to get for yourself. You get in order to give. It's a spiritual reality. So whenever you find yourself caught up in this whole idea of not being 
and not achieving and not getting and not going forward with God, recognize that you don't lower God's standard. You raise yourself up to recognize you're not meeting the standard. And you admit it freely and say, yeah, I'm not there. I'm blowing it. I know. Thank you, God. I get it. I'm the one at fault. I'm the one that needs to change my ways and develop godly habits that I might walk with you today, that I might talk with you and hear your voice, that I might see you in those around me, that I might be blessed by them and I might bless them. Because they may have something that teaches me how to move a little farther forward than where I am right now stuck in a mire because I've been so absorbed with myself rather than giving of myself to someone else. You see, it's never about self. It's called deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow Jesus.